All right, you degenerates, let's talk about Stellar Blade. And don't you worry about the bear suit, it'll be gone soon. If you look past the fan service, I think that this game is a pretty strong first outing for Studio Shift Up. Let's talk about it. First off, the combat is fantastic. It's responsive and provides a number of tools to ensure that you are prepared to face nearly any challenge. The game emphasizes the benefits of parrying and perfect dodges as this allows you to build your beta level, which then allows you to unleash special attacks. These flourishes are required to do critical damage, and sometimes it's actually better to let the meter build so that you can maximize your damage output when you are completing combos. As the game progresses, you'll learn a number of new skills that allow for follow-ups after your perfect parry or dodge, and these are incredibly important because it allows you to save resources when you happen to fight challenging bosses. Maintaining aggression in Stellar Blade is a must because bosses can be downright brutal with their combo strings. Every boss I've fought so far has punished my tentativeness and breaking down their shield is vital to doing critical damage. I love the fact that the game forces you to be aggressive by having the bosses close the distance with a critical strike. It helps keep you on your toes the entire time. Now, one of the things I learned early on, and this is primarily because I was punished a lot for it, is that the perfect parry and perfect dodge with a follow through is not going to necessarily end a combo string for an enemy, especially bosses. Sometimes they're just going to turn around and smack you in the head. It's going to knock you down. You're probably going to get really upset. What I learned is that while they're great against regular enemies, you cannot abuse them against bosses. So what you should do is probably save those follow-ups for the end of an enemy's combo string, knowing that you're guaranteed to get that hit, knowing that it's guaranteed that they won't follow through with an attack, and then you can break their shield and do big damage. This game does a good job of punishing the player when you're just trying to swing wildly. You really have to have some form of restraint, and I really feel like if you show restraint early on, you're probably going to be successful, otherwise you're gonna get knocked out of a rhythm constantly. But if you happen to struggle with the precision combat, it's A-OK -okay because Stellar Blade just provides you with a bunch of different tools. Grenades are awesome in this game, and eventually you're gonna unlock a critical skill that will allow you to shoot enemies as a kind of dodging ability. It just counters them, knocks them up, and it exposes their weak spot for big damage. I love that. I thought that was so cool when it happens because you know when you get the gun at first, You'll probably have one or two ammo options, but really when you unlock like the concentrated beam, the rockets, you can just do critical damage. It is really entertaining watching a boss just melt in front of you. To me, Stellar Blades combat is versatile and it is fun. I love using shock grenades to stun every enemy. I'm surprising that it works on bosses, if I'm being honest, because it will knock down a boss if their shield is down, and that gives you so much time to breathe. Now, you can't exploit this because grenades do have limited uses, but it doesn't change the fact that these are useful and can turn the tide against a frustrating enemy. While I do love the combat, the control scheme is set up in this game to punish anyone who happens to button mash. The game wants you to be precise with your inputs as your beta abilities can be activated by holding guard and then pressing any of the face buttons. So if you're trying to guard and dash, you need to work on releasing guard then dashing or you're going to waste a beta bar and this can suck and I know this because I've done it so much and it is so annoying when it happens. Regardless, combat is the biggest draw next to fan service in this game and Shift Up has created a versatile in-depth system that is both punishing and rewarding. Next up, I wanna talk about exploration. Holy hell, I was surprised by how layered and detailed these environments are. It does not matter if you're wandering one of the open sandbox areas or you're heading down into a linear level. There are a number of hidden paths in both and you are rewarded for going off the beaten path. There are a number of humorous moments between Adam and Eve as well, especially when an enemy just happens to show up next to a treasure after you've had your back turned. I find that to be the best because Adam will constantly show up and say, nice, by itself or something. He's like, my bad, I should stop talking. Exactly, you should because I keep getting attacked and ambushed and you just shut up, but it's always great to see this happen. When I first arrived in the wastelands, 
I was kind of surprised by the detail. I won't lie about that. I didn't think exploration would be a major part of this game. I personally thought that the sandbox areas would have a few surprises, but in reality, there's a lot to discover. This also extended to the second open area in the desert. And once again, I was impressed because the developers are able to keep these areas varied and interesting. It also helps that there are multiple checkpoints, so you do not have to spend time backtracking into areas. So make sure you hit up those payphones because I didn't at first like a dummy and then I realized how useful they were for exploration. I think what's surprising though, is that Stellar Blade really doesn't try to force exploration or side content onto the player. Now it's definitely recommended because you will benefit from all the resources you'll gain, but if you want to make this a lean experience, you are free to experience just the narrative if you choose. You can ignore everything. Now I wouldn't blame you because I don't believe the side content found here is particularly groundbreaking. It does add more context to this world, but the side content is very familiar to anyone who's played an open world game. I think what makes it fun is the combat. And I'm gonna constantly go back to that. With that being said, I do believe the developers do a good job of making you want to explore. I firmly believe that appropriately rewarding the player for their efforts is important in these games that feature open sandbox areas. You make it easy to traverse and you do not overcomplicate environmental puzzles. Scanning is your friend. And while I can see arguments about being overpowered, at least you'll know you're not wasting your time. For the most part, you aren't. And I think Stellar Blade does a good job of enticing players in both the open sandbox areas and the more linear levels. Speaking of those levels, they are well-designed, visually interesting, and feature enough variety to keep the player invested. While I'm not a big fan of how floaty the platforming mechanics are in this game, when you have these spaces that allow you to get vertical, that you can find a hidden path or get to drop on an enemy, I just become a big fan. I don't know what it is, but anytime I see that in an action game, I love abusing that. It just happens to be one of those things where I'm like, these enemies are giving me problems. Let me see if I can get the drop on them. Let me see if I can chain executions. And you can do that here in Stellar Blade. Now you can also scan and scanning is helpful in linear levels because it allows the player to gather information, but it's not going to show you the layout of an area. So it's not going to completely break the game for you. It just acts as a helpful guide and allows you to make an informed decision. Now, once again, you can just keep on the beaten path but you will miss out on a lot of good loot that will help you when you eventually reach the end. None of these linear levels outstay their welcome, and I think that's a big plus. In terms of exploration and combat, I think Stellar Blade nailed it, and I'm really happy that they made that incredibly fun. When it comes to the plot though, I don't think I paid too much attention to it. I don't think any of the characters are particularly interesting, including Eve, I just think the narrative as a whole is just okay, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. But I think both the world design and the characters are pretty great. I will say that at least. The Natibas are all very cool, and I think the environments are all fairly strong. Shift Up really did a good job of making Zion interesting for the player, and I think every area for that matter is at least interesting visually. The apocalyptic cyberpunk aesthetic is very cool and i think going from a desert straight into an abandoned facility or a destroyed city is really well done i find it really hard to judge stellar blade on story elements because these types of games that feature stylish action generally lack substance when it comes to the narrative and their characters yes this game does take itself seriously but it's hard to associate with this at times because of the fan service you being able to change Eve's appearance can lead to unintentionally hilarious moments. Yes, someone is dying. This is a serious moment, but you're dressed up as a teddy bear with a ponytail. It just doesn't mesh tonally, and I can see people knocking the game for the uneven tone. My theory on this is that maybe the developers were too concerned about gathering interest for their game that they overlooked the fact that people would rightfully point at the fan service to be one of the big reasons to be excited about this game. The thing is, once you start playing Stellar Blade, you're gonna learn that this game is really good on its own. And it turns out that the gratuitous fan service really isn't needed, but it's here. And 
the biggest problem with it is that it just gets in the way of the tone of the game. And people would probably be very upset if you tried to change it now. It doesn't matter how hard the developers work in the future to get past this. They can put out some of the best DLC of all time, but I guarantee you people are going to be looking forward to seeing what Eve is going to wear. She is wearing some of the most ridiculous outfits in this game and the reactions to them aren't surprising. I can see people really working hard for all of those cans to get that special outfit. I'm just saying. My judgment of Stellar Blade is completely based on its fun factor. Is this game fun to play? 100%. I'll admit that my expectations going in weren't high, but that was because of the demo. I just wasn't a fan of all the slowdown. I thought it would get in the way of combat, and I was completely wrong. The developers clearly took their time crafting the combat system, and I think it paid off. There's a level of polish here that's honestly impressive. And while I've mentioned the depth of the combat system, when I go back and look at some of my footage, I'm actually shocked about how much is actually there. I think the balance is just fine. And while I wish you could roll, that's a personal thing. I understand totally why you can't. I think that rolling would probably just lead to a more passive play style and would go against the aggressive offensive philosophies found in this game. There are so many things that Shift Up should be proud of with Stellar Blade. I've always believed that there are far too many examples of what not to do when it comes to open worlds and sandbox titles. And I think Shift Up did a good job of avoiding critical mistakes. Do I think that some of the RPG systems fit? No, but I'm not gonna dock them for decisions that don't greatly impact my enjoyment of the game. Now, before we end the video, I'm gonna go on a small minor rant, and that is the critique of this game and the critique of gaming overall has gotten a bit to the point where it's a bit pretentious, especially when we have to consider that overall, when you are playing a game, when you are spending your hard earned cash on it, is the game fun? And I think that if you try to look past the fan service, and yes, it is completely in your face, it happens from the very jump of the game, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the game itself. The gameplay found here is at a level of polish that I think for its first run probably rivals Liza P. I think that this game is just one of those shining examples of a new developer stepping in and showcasing what a combination of different systems, right? There's a lot of borrowed ideas here that they absolutely nail when it comes to their combat and exploration. Nothing feels, in my opinion, particularly new about this game, but the level of polish here makes this game very fun and makes it an easy recommendation. And every time I've seen a critique on this game, people tend to weigh things differently. And I think that for the fun factor portion of it, when you're talking about the gameplay overall, this game is insanely polished compared to some of its contemporaries and I think that needs to be highlighted. I think that to me, that really elevates the score of this game. It's a lot of fun. Yes, Shift Up can work on a number of different things, the side stories, all that type of stuff, but what you have right here works and works really well. I'm very impressed by what Shift Up has made. And honestly, it's one of my favorite titles of the year. The gameplay to me is just addicting when everything clicks and it should click early on because you have multiple opportunities to test out abilities. And I think that's also something that's a big plus for me. The fact that I can easily go into the tutorials and lab and get better at this game. This game feels great when things click. And I think that should be something that we really weigh heavily when we are reviewing some of these games. Like, can we just have fun, please? Can we just admit when a game is fun? instead of trying to talk about all these different pretentious things. Like if the game's fun, the game is fun. It might have some of its flaws, but it's not toward the core gameplay. That stuff right there, that shit is really good. But everything else, I understand. But man, the gameplay for the most part is some of the most fun I've had in an action title in a while. And yes, it does rival some of the parrying and precise dodging that we found in Sekiro. And I think that's why I'm such a big fan of this game because they do such a good job with it. I just think there's a lot to love about this game and I'm looking forward to seeing what Shift Up does next in the future. 
I do think though that with the success found in this game that there's probably going to be a lot less fan service in the next title or there's going to be more fan service. We don't know. Maybe they just double down on it, but whatever, it doesn't matter because regardless of the decision, people are going to be worried about it anyways, and they're probably going to use that as either a fixation for the game or something that they're going to hold against the game. Whatever. The game is fun. Okay. If you're looking for that uh, fan service though, go back to playing Black Desert Online, you fucking heathens. Let me know what you think on Stellar Blade below. And that's going to do it for this video. If you like the content, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. I'm Ken from Pixelated Thoughts. I will talk to you next time.